Did you know there is something you can do right after eating that can help lower your blood sugar almost immediately? Most people think blood sugar control depends only on what you eat, but the truth is far more surprising. Even a short five to 10 minute movement done at the right time can change how your body handles glucose. UCLA Health has reported that this tiny shift in your routine can reduce the spike that happens after a meal and new research from News Medical shows that this simple action can work faster than many people expect. Most people do not know this. Most people sit down after eating and let their blood sugar rise higher and higher. But you are about to learn a method that requires no equipment, no heavy workout, and no complicated plan. It is simple, it is natural, and you can do it immediately after every meal. Today you will learn exactly what this method is, why it works so quickly, and how just a few minutes of activity can help your muscles pull glucose directly out of your bloodstream. You will also discover how this small habit can support your long-term health, help reduce post-meal crashes, and even improve the way your body handles future meals. This is one of the most underused tools for blood sugar control, and most people overlook it because it seems too easy. But easy does not mean weak. Easy can be powerful when done consistently and correctly. In this video, you will also learn the types of meals that respond best to this technique, the mistakes people make after eating that worsen blood sugar, and a simple rule you can follow after breakfast, lunch, and dinner to support smoother glucose levels throughout the day. You will find out how your muscles work like sponges when activated, how they pull in glucose for energy, and how this natural process can flatten the blood sugar spike that would normally follow your meal. You will hear about science-backed facts that are rarely mentioned, including how even light movement can outperform doing nothing at all, and why timing is more important than intensity. Stay with this video until the end because we will break down the exact steps you must follow right after eating. Nothing extreme, nothing exhausting, just a small shift that can make a meaningful difference. You will learn how to integrate it into your routine without stress, how to adapt it if you are busy, and how to do it even if you do not exercise regularly. By the end, you will understand why researchers are paying so much attention to this method and why you should too. The goal of this video is to give you something you can use today, not next week, not someday, but the very next time you finish a meal. Welcome to our channel, where we share simple science-backed health tips that actually fit real life. If you find value in this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and join us for more videos that help you take control of your health every single day. When you eat, your body begins a rapid chain reaction. The food starts breaking down in your stomach and the carbohydrates turn into glucose. This glucose moves into your bloodstream and your blood sugar rises. This rise is normal, but the size of the spike depends on what you eat, how much you eat, and even how your body processes the meal. When the spike is small, your body handles it easily. But when the spike is large, your system has to work much harder to bring the sugar back down. Your pancreas must release more insulin, your cells must respond quickly, and your blood vessels feel the impact of that sudden jump. Over time, these repeated spikes can make your body less sensitive to insulin, which means your blood sugar stays higher for longer. Researchers have shown that sharp rises in blood sugar can begin to damage the inner lining of your blood vessels. This damage does not happen all at once. It builds slowly, meal after meal, day after day. When the vessel walls are stressed, they lose flexibility. They become more inflamed. This creates the perfect environment for long-term problems such as poor circulation, nerve issues, and higher risk of diabetes-related complications. These spikes also affect how you feel in the short term. Many people notice that after a large rise in blood sugar, they get tired, foggy, or suddenly hungry again. This is because your blood sugar climbs too fast and then drops just as quickly, leaving you with that familiar crash. It becomes a cycle that repeats itself 
unless you interrupt it. The good news is that you have more control than you might think. Even small changes right after eating can help your body handle glucose more smoothly. You are not powerless against spikes. You do not need intense workouts or strict diets to make a difference. Simple actions can change the way your blood sugar behaves. When you take the right steps after a meal, your muscles begin to pull glucose from your bloodstream and use it for energy. This reduces the amount of sugar left in your blood and helps flatten the spike before it grows too high. Instead of letting the glucose sit in your bloodstream and create stress on your system, you guide it to where your body actually needs it. This is why understanding what happens after you eat is so important. Every meal is an opportunity. You can either let your blood sugar rise sharply, or you can take a small action that helps your body manage it better. This simple shift does not require extra strength, extra time, or special tools. It only requires awareness of how your body works and knowing what to do within the first few minutes after you finish eating. There is one simple action that can change the way your body handles a meal, and it takes almost no effort. Go for a short walk right after you finish eating, not later, not when you remember, not when you feel heavy or tired right away. This small shift in timing is what makes the difference. Research has shown that even a five minute walk immediately after a meal can lower the peak rise in blood sugar compared to sitting still. That means your body deals with the glucose more efficiently and the spike stays smaller. Another study found that a 10 minute walk done right after eating works even better than waiting half an hour. The timing matters because your body is already digesting the food and releasing glucose into your bloodstream. Movement at that exact moment changes the entire response. To do this properly, keep it simple. As soon as you finish eating, stand up and start walking. You do not need to change clothes, prepare for exercise, or find the perfect route. Walk at a comfortable and relaxed pace. Concentrate on moving your legs and keeping your body gently active. Aim for five to 15 minutes. Even the shortest walks help but going a little longer provides even more support. The most important part is starting within the first 30 minutes after your meal. This is when your blood sugar begins to rise and your muscles are most ready to pull in glucose if you activate them. A casual walk around your home, your backyard, your hallway, or your neighborhood is enough. You do not need to push your speed or break a sweat. Normal walking is effective because your muscles are doing steady work without stress. The reason this method works so well is found in how your muscles behave during movement. When you walk, your muscles become active and begin to use glucose for energy. They do this automatically. They do not wait for insulin. They pull glucose straight out of your bloodstream so they can keep moving. As a result, there is less sugar left circulating in your blood. This lowers the height of the spike that usually follows a meal. Your body does not need to release as much insulin and your system stays more balanced. Walking also slows down how quickly your stomach empties food into your intestines. When digestion moves at a steadier pace, glucose enters your bloodstream more gradually. This creates a smoother rise instead of a steep jump. Even light walking engages large muscle groups, and those muscles act like giant sponges for glucose. The more muscles you activate, the more glucose they can absorb. This is why sitting still after a meal allows your blood sugar to climb higher while moving your body keeps it controlled. This one simple action gives your body the help it needs at the moment it needs it most. There are a few simple habits that can make the post-meal walk even more effective. The first one begins with the meal itself. When you choose foods that are low glycemic and high in fiber, your blood sugar rises more slowly. Whole grains, vegetables, and legumes break down at a steadier pace, giving your body more time to handle the glucose. They do not flood your bloodstream all at once. Pairing your carbohydrates with protein and healthy fats also helps. 
This combination slows digestion, delays the release of sugar into your blood, and keeps your energy more stable. A meal built with balanced nutrients gives your body a smoother starting point, so the walk you take afterward works even better. Another factor that plays a huge role is portion size. Large meals tend to create large spikes because your system has to process a bigger load of glucose. Smaller portions are easier for your body to manage. Using a smaller plate or dividing your meals into two servings can help you avoid overwhelming your system. You do not need to cut out foods you enjoy. You just need to give your body a manageable amount. When the meal is moderate, your post-meal walk has less work to do and your blood sugar stays more controlled. Hydration is another tool that is often overlooked. Drinking water throughout the day supports your body's ability to regulate blood sugar. When you stay hydrated, your bloodstream has the right balance of fluid and your kidneys can help clear excess glucose more effectively. Water also supports digestion, which influences how quickly glucose enters your blood. Even small improvements in hydration can make your blood sugar responses more steady. One habit to avoid is sitting still, right after you finish eating. Staying seated allows glucose to rise quickly because your muscles remain inactive. When the body is completely at rest, it does not use much energy. So the sugar from your meal stays in your bloodstream longer. Even light movement helps. Standing up, walking around the house, or doing a quick household task signals your muscles to start working. This small signal is enough to improve how your body handles the glucose from your meal. The final tip is consistency. Doing these steps once in a while will help, but doing them after every meal brings the biggest benefit meals high in carbohydrates, especially need attention because they break down into glucose more quickly. When you build a routine of taking a short walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, your body becomes better at controlling blood sugar throughout the day. Over time, your muscles become more responsive, your blood sugar spikes become smaller, and your energy becomes more stable. The key is not intensity or effort. The key is making these simple habits part of your regular routine. There are situations where a short walk after meals can make a noticeable difference, but it may not be enough on its own. If you have diagnosed diabetes, the walk can support your blood sugar control, but it should never replace your doctor's advice, your medication, or the plan you already follow. Walking helps your muscles use glucose, but your treatment plan is designed for your specific condition. Your doctor understands how your body responds to food, medicine, and activity, so your regular care remains essential. The walk is a helpful addition, not a replacement for medical guidance. Many people with diabetes find that the walk smooths their blood sugar curve, but they still rely on their prescribed treatment to keep things stable. It is also important to pay close attention to how your body feels during and after activity. If you feel dizzy, shaky, weak, or unusually tired, your blood sugar may be dropping too low. If you feel your heart racing, unusually thirsty, or extremely sluggish, you may be too high. In these moments, stop walking and check your levels if you have a meter available. Follow your personal health care plan for managing highs or lows. Every person with diabetes has different triggers and patterns, so listening to your body matters. Walking is helpful, but your safety comes first. Your body will tell you when something is not right and you should respond the way your doctor has instructed. For people who have mobility issues, the idea of walking after every meal can feel limiting. The good news is that movement does not need to be intense to be effective. Even standing up and shifting your weight activates your muscles enough to help your body start using glucose. Gentle movements, such as slow marching in place, stretching your legs, or lightly holding onto a counter while moving your feet can still support blood sugar control. According to health experts, any activity that keeps you from staying completely seated is better than doing nothing. 
The goal is not to reach a certain speed or distance. The goal is simply to activate your muscles so they can help your bloodstream manage the glucose from your meal. Some people may find that certain conditions, age-related challenges, or medications make movement harder. In those cases, modifying the activity is perfectly fine. The important part is staying aware of how your body responds. Even minimal activity can make a difference because it signals your muscles to start working. The key is choosing the safest form of movement your body can handle and doing it consistently. Try this simple step after your very next meal. Stand up, take a 10 minute walk, and pay attention to how your body feels afterward. Many people notice lighter digestion, steadier energy, and fewer sudden drops. Your experience matters, so share it with us in the comments below. Tell us if you felt a difference even from that short walk. Your story might help someone else who is trying to understand their own blood sugar better. If you found value in this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. We share simple science-backed health tips that anyone can use in everyday life. Your support helps us reach more people who are trying to take small steps toward better health. And remember, the little things you do today matter. A short walk may seem small, but these small steps add up. Each walk helps your body handle your meals more smoothly one meal at a time.